All right, so today we're going to talk about sexual flexibility, uh, a novel way of looking at it uh, by combining the Kinsey scale and gender. Uh, that should be over here if you can't see it or if, you, uh, or if I'm too dumb to be able to figure out how to put it in. Uh, click through uh, to the thread uh, that's linked in the uh, box at the bottom. So anyways, you have the Kinsey scale. It's from 0 to 6. If you're a male and you only like females, you're yeah, right, uh, you would be a 0. Uh, if you only like males, you would be a six. Um, and if you like uh, men and women, you'd be anywhere from one to five. Now, the problem with the Kinsey scale is it's very simplistic. It reduces sexuality to only genitalia. So if you're a guy that's attracted to, let's say, um, uh, let's say masculine guys, or let's say you're a guy that's attracted to feminine, and you're attracted to both uh, feminine men, feminine women, you're kind of left out in the cold because genitalia might not be um, the, the specific selling point. The other problem is uh, because gay has been associated with effeminacy, a lot of masculine men don't want to admit to liking other men because they think it'll make them seem more feminine. So I've come up with the concept of Grero, masculine likes masculine, to, dif to differentiate between uh, masculine men and feminine, feminine men. The only problem with this is the Kinsey scale does not adequately uh, graph for that. Um, so if we add gender to the mix and we say, what is the person's gender who is doing the liking? So you're a male who likes women and men equally, but what is your own gender? We could uh, have the red line, uh, the red axis, the y-axis representing that gender. So then you would have a chart as you see. Now, of course, you know, what is gender? Uh, it's not as easy to tell uh, as, as with sex. Sex is kind of binary. It's, you know, vagina, penis. Uh, there's not too much of a variation on that. And uh, with gender, it's a little more, uh, more gradations. It's a little harder to tell. But I think we can at least distinguish between rather masculine and rather feminine. So if we were so inclined, we could come up with actual uh, definitions. And, and, but, but for now, I think this is good enough. Uh, I think most people would agree that you can you can have a scale from masculine to feminine. So anyways, let's just describe what we're seeing with the chart here. Uh, the first thing is, um, yeah, the uh, blue line would be the Kinsey scale, the x-axis, the um, red line, the, uh, the vertical axis would be the gender uh, line over here, the gender axis. So then we have the chart. Uh, the green area would be just the exclusive heterosexuals. That would be just all green, as you can see. Guerreros, who would be masculine, who like other men, would be uh, would be a D, uh, or that's just my notes. It would be orange, as you can see up at the top. Masculine men again, who like uh, who like men. And let's see here. Uh, e E would be uh, internal notes. That's not for general consumption. Uh, pink would be the gay guys, uh, more or less effeminate. And they also are more or less uh, interested only in other men. Now, I go into the whole gay uh, and feminine association in Chapter 3. Uh, that's well accepted by science. And again, that's one of the reasons I want to do this, is to make a distinction between Grero, orange, and gay, pink, that you can like other men, but you don't have to be effeminate to do it. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but that's, I think, the big selling point of Guerrero is that it differentiates between uh, feminine and masculine. E H. Oh, e e F. Yes. Uh, the str now you see at the bottom left, you see in the green area, you also see a, a, a gray, gray stripes. And that would be... You know, every time I bring up the idea that gay is effeminate, some smart ass is going to say, oh, well, I know, a, I know a heterosexual guy who's really feminine and he's into only women. And therefore, you're wrong because I have no understanding of general patterns or averages. Well, you know, I, I accept that there could be feminine men who are attracted only to women or more or less only to women. And they would then be uh, in this chart. They would be in that area solves that problem. And the other thing is, you know, I, I personally have also seen uh, somewhat feminine men who, who you, you'd think based off of the stereotypes, they're only attracted to women or they're only, they're feminine 
and they would then be attracted to men because they're gay and that's a stereotype. But oftentimes, or some of the times, they're not. And that's sort of always been interesting to me as how they, how they blend in. I mean, one of the, the ways they could blend in is even if we say, let's say 2% of the population is gay, let's say they're all effeminate, just for the sake of argument, that's 2% of the population. But because same-sex sex and all that stuff is associated with mosquitoes, all that stuff is associated with bad, those people get noticed. Now, if you're feminine and heterosexual and you say, oh, but I have a girlfriend, I have a wife, I have kids, you kind of blend in. The other thing is you also blend in because most other heterosexuals are not this way. So you're a very small minority within, an accept within the acceptable majority. So you're not going to stick out like a sore thumb because you can always fall back on, I'm effeminate, but I have a girlfriend, I have a wife, I have kids. Uh, let's see here. Yes, now you also see that most of the chart is actually white. So there's really nothing coded for it. And the way I would look at it is, I mean, none of this is absolute. None of this is, uh, it's open to revision. And certainly there's many other ways of looking at sexuality and gender. Uh, but, but that there's, you know, overlapping uh, lines. There's a lot of flexibility uh, and that... Uh, I think one of the ways of looking at this chart is it, is it could make people feel a lot more comfortable that it's not just binary, you're gay, you're straight, and nothing else. That there's other variables to look at. And uh, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to say on this. Oh, and oh, one more thing, yeah, the whole gay masculine thing. Well, uh, with this chart, I mean, if you look at the science, it's pretty well established that that gay is sort of feminine. And even if we don't call the pink area at the bottom right gay, uh, the fact is you will still have men who are attracted to other men who are feminine. And you're going to have men who are attracted to other men who are not feminine. So I, I would, you know, call that gay. But then what happens to people who are masculine gay? Well, then there's no such thing as masculine gay. Uh, those would be grero. Or maybe somewhere in the nether region between uh, attracted to men so one through six on the Kinsey scale, but not really feminine, not really masculine, maybe somewhere in the middle, whatever. As I said, the whole point of this is, I, is to show that there's a lot more variety out there than the binary options that we're given right now, even if some of us might end up in those um, more defined regions. So anyways, before I ramble on any more, um, if any questions as usual, feel free to ask, etc.